next up, we have our colleagues from a, the California Cyanobacteria and Harmful Algal Bloom CCHAB Network. Uh, we have with us, uh, I think, several members from the group, Rebecca Stanton, Sarah Ryan, and maybe we have uh, Jamie Smith with us. I don't know who's taking the lead on this one, but uh, thank you for joining us, folks, and thank you for sharing what you guys are doing to keep uh, recreationists and others uh, safe. Yes, thanks, Eric. This is Becky Stanton, um, and uh, Jamie or Sarah, do you want to introduce yourself while I get the screen share uh, started? Sure. Uh, so my name is uh, Jamie Smith, and I'm uh, one of the newly elected uh, co-chairs to the CC Hab Network, and I'm a Hab scientist at the Southern California Coastal Water Research Project. And I'm Sarah Ryan. I'm the environmental director for the Big Valley Band of Pomo Indians and also one of the co-chairs of CC Hub. Great. Um, sorry, I swapped screens given where my camera is. Is it showing up okay now? Looks great. Okay, great. Thanks. I'll jump right in. Appreciate the opportunity to talk about um, the sister um, uh, network and work group under the Water Quality Monitor Council. And um, thanks to Sharon, uh, Sarah, and Jamie for helping us put this together. And so wanted to talk about what we are as CC Hub Network, um, who's involved, some of the process of how we function, um, some of our products that have been developed and some uh, lessons learned that uh, might be useful for other uh, work groups under the Water Quality Monitoring Council. So what is CC Hub Network? Um, we were formerly the statewide blue-green algae working group. Um, that was established in 2006, which was way <laughs> before my time um, at OEHA, um, in response to um, really high levels um, of uh, microcystin and blooms in the Klamath River, River reservoirs up at the Oregon, uh, California area. And in 2016, it was moved under the Water Quality Monitoring Council and uh, rebranded as the CC Hub Network. And our continuing goals include um, identifying and prioritizing management questions, um, synthesizing and exchanging information about uh, existing data, working on how we communicate about cyanobacteria and HABs in California, and identifying uh, data gaps. And uh, we do this by incorporating uh, a lot of different uh, participants, um, including um, uh, government agencies at the federal, state, tribal, and local level, as well as academics and researchers, uh, nonprofit and non-governmental organizations, as well as other stakeholders that are involved uh, to varying degrees and varying aspects of uh, CyanoHabs in California. How does CC Hub Network function? Um, um, as we mentioned, um, it came under the Water Quality Monitoring Council in 2016, and we adopted a charter at that point. Uh, it was updated again in 2019 to be consistent with ongoing practices and consistency across the working groups. Um, we have three co-chairs that do two-year terms that can be uh, consecutive or um, in over time, um, and we try to make sure those are representing our various interests and a diversity of organizations that are involved. So we currently have a state government, a non uh, uh, research organization, as well as tribal government representation with our three co-chairs. Uh, Water Board provides our support staff um, to help administer the the meetings and um, update the information on the, uh, the portal. Um, and we communicate through our water board email list um, that's available at the link at the bottom, which is our uh, CC Hub Network web page. Um, we report out to the Water Quality Monitoring Council upon request or when there are specific topics that are relevant for that consideration. Um, we generally have quarterly network meetings. We identify speakers that are um, doing ongoing research or recently published um, that are relevant to our um, interest and arrange for when it's possible to fit them into a quarterly meeting. 
Uh, we have our regular agenda items that include updates from our regional HAB coordinators as well as the statewide uh, FHAB program to talk about HAB response and, and the routine monitoring that occurs in some locations. Uh, we have report outs of our various subcommittees as needed. Um, we try to include other networking or collaborative items on a routine basis and um, we are at this point uh, recording the meetings and posting them as was mentioned earlier to the Water Quality Monitoring Council YouTube channel. For subcommittees, uh, we generally have these established as needed and we have voluntary leadership. Um, some are to uh, have ongoing discussion of relevant topics like the mitigation subcommittee. Um, and some have been explicit for developing uh, particular products of interest. Um, the proposed products and the web uh, content become presented at a subsequent CCM network meeting for consideration and adoption um, by the members and approval by the co-chairs. So one of the products that um, was developed under the guidance use subcommittee was the um, uh, trigger levels and signage for blank tonic HABs or water quality HABs. Um, those included the three key uh, toxin classes of concern at that point. We have um, currently have more information about saxotoxins, so um, that's an additional one that needs to be addressed in the future. Um, and we have developed three levels of advisory, advisory signage, caution, warning, and danger. And there's different recommendations for recreational use based on those three levels. And then we have a guidance um, that talks about when to post or remove uh, advisory signage. These were reviewed and adopted through the CC Hub network and have been incorporated in the California HABS portal um, posting guidelines um, as voluntary guidance for statewide implementation. Um, we also have a mitigation subcommittee that developed uh, mitigation resources. There's the flow chart um, that I just shown as an example. I understand you won't be able to read it at that scale. Um, it talks about uh, different things to know about your water body and different considerations as you consider what options there are to mitigate for harmful algal blooms. And this is particularly for lakes. Um, they also have a more developed web page that has other content and resources. Again, this was reviewed and adopted through CCAB Network, and there's a, a dedicated web page on the California HABS portal for that. And then the most recent um, development was through the Benthic um, Cyanobacteria Signage Subcommittee that was developed uh, signage, posting guidance, and some frequently asked questions documents for the public. These again were reviewed and adopted through the CCAB network and are posted as signs and posting guidance again as voluntary statewide guidance for uh, people to implement as they do uh, routine or event-based monitoring. So some of the um, things that we have learned as going through this, again, Sarah and I have been co-chairs over a longer period of time, and Jamie's recently joined in. Um, but in general, it's been hard to recruit new co-chairs. We've generally um, mentioned that people are happy to have us keep working as long as we're willing to do it, but we want to make sure we allow for the opportunity for, for new members to join in and, and become co-chairs, and so we just want to make sure we keep um, inviting people to do that and um, and allow for that possibility. Um, we did try several years ago to get a CC Hub Network logo so that we could brand our CC Hub Network products more specifically um, rather than um, the you know different agencies that may have been head staff involved. Um, we did go through both an uh, state agency graphic designer and tried to do a logo contest through CC Hub, um, but both of those didn't result in an approved logo, so we um, have not uh, kept going in that endeavor, but it still might be useful to consider for other groups. Um, for subcommittees, uh, we found that it really requires a committed uh, leader with a clear goal in mind. Uh, we've generally allowed for subcommittees to sunset once those goals are achieved. We don't need to keep meeting just to meet. Um, and it generally takes um, staff time commitments only because we don't really have an external funding source available. So that uh, can achieve a lot, but that's about where we're at in terms of what's possible. Um, and then one of the things we have um, a lot of resources on the California's HAB portal, some of which I mentioned, 
but generally some of the signage was English and Spanish and a few of the materials are also in Spanish. Um, we, do, we don't have um, translated materials in a lot of other languages and not everything is also in Spanish. And my understanding is the current web template um, doesn't allow for Google Translate. So although we know it's, it's not as precise and certainly not as good of a technical language, we don't currently even have that as an option. So just something to acknowledge. And um, that's what I have. Uh, happy to answer any questions, and I'm sure hopefully my other co-chairs will assist as well. If you have a question, please go ahead and just unmute and ask your question. If you like, you can also submit it via chat. I have my chat window open. Thank you for giving us this uh, overview of what you guys have been up to and how you're organized. Uh, the Safe to Swim Network has also had the uh, the leadership challenges uh, trying to recruit people as well. I think that's maybe a common theme throughout many of the council's working groups. And certainly if, if something comes up later, um, people can feel free to contact us afterwards. And Eric, you're welcome to share our contact. All right. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, do you guys have any, any um, uh, meetings coming up soon that our work group should uh, be aware of? Uh, we have a July 27th meeting. Um, it's 9 to noon. I understand there was some overlap with um, some of other Water Quality Monitoring Council meetings uh, for July. It's a little hard with the summer holidays and the uh, travel schedules, but um, hopefully if people are interested, they will still be available. And uh, we're working on an agenda. We should be getting that out relatively soon. Great, great. At least we can put it on our calendars now if we didn't know about it. Hey, Eric, um, I wanted to uh, to bring up a point uh, sort of related to the previous um, uh, presentation, actually, or previous discussion, and that is that um, with CC Hub, um, it's, it's a lot more clear because we do these report outs that tribes are doing uh, cyanotoxin monitoring and other water quality monitoring that yeah. agencies should know about or, you know, be aware of. Um, especially when they're doing their posting and, you know, considerations of, of, you know, just protection measures and mitigation measures. And I just wanted to point that out for the Safe to Swim uh, network um, as well, that there are, um, there are tribal coordinators within each regional board who, uh, who are um, connecting up with tribes throughout each region in California. And um, if you are looking for data and you're looking for um, water monitoring activities, I would highly recommend um, look, looking, you know, talking to the tribal coordinator. Um, and I'm happy to help facilitate that because there are tribes throughout the state who are doing water quality monitoring that could be extremely useful for the signage and the outreach that you're doing. It's just that maybe people haven't connected up yet. So I just want to put a plug in for that to either look for the tribal coordinator um, of the, of each um, region, or feel free to reach out to me. It can help facilitate. Facilitate. Thanks. Thank you, Sarah. That's that's really important. And, um, a couple of years ago, <clears throat> you and I were able to uh, uh, work with EPA in presenting some workshops uh, on sanitary surveys. Well, EPA has reached out to me. They want to do those again. Uh, and for those of you with the network, uh, we have linkage uh, on our web portal to training that we provided recently on how to use EPA's app for sanitary surveys. So EPA would like to come out to California teaming up with tribes, EJ groups, and community groups uh, through the clean water team and the council's working groups to present these workshops in person and how to use the sanitary survey app. Um, so if you know a group that would like to uh, have a workshop, just reach out to me and uh, I'll get a list together and present it to, uh, to Abraham with uh, EPA. Uh, things are, are opening up for them. They're beginning to, uh, to have a budget for travel and restrictions are, are uh, decreasing. So they really want to put together uh, a plan for maybe this fall or next spring to come out and, and do these workshops. Looks like uh, there's one hand raised. Hi, everybody. Yes, uh, I'm Brian Santos, and um, I'm uh, in one of the newly elected co-chairs of the relatively new um, 
uh, JEDI work group, which stands for Justice, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion. And um, so you're speaking of uh, things with the tribe that actually, um, we actually had somebody who, I forget what, what who he was with, but he was working with, I think, the Pitt River tribe. Um, and so if you don't mind, Sarah, I'd love to connect him with you because you might have some of the um, information he was interested in. And um, so I'll, maybe I'll share in the chat for that, uh, if you don't mind, Sarah, so I can get your email address. Okay, yes, I, I just put my email address in the, oh, okay, in the awesome. chat. Yeah, please feel free to reach out. That's great. Sounds great. Okay, cool. I will send that to you later. Thank you. And then um, another thing I just want to kind of piggyback off of, um, just to kind of give a little spiel for our work group, um, because we are just kind of getting started. Um, we just had our first official meeting last a uh, couple months ago in May. And, um, and so we are actually looking to get ambassadors from all the other work groups in the Water Monitoring Council. Um, so if any of you know anybody who is interested in your per respective work groups to be involved, um, basically we, you know, the, uh, I think it was a couple of years ago, the work group, uh, the Water Monitoring Council realized that we needed to try to promote more diversity and inclusion within our work groups and, and also outreaching to our community members. Um, and so we are just getting started again. And so if anybody is interested in, um, feel free to contact me or Vicki Calkertz. I'll send her, um, uh, I'll put her info in the chat as well. And yeah, we would love to have you, uh, you know, somebody from every work group in, um, involved. Thanks, Thank you for Brian. making that known. Thanks. While we're, while you're maybe unmuted, um, is there um, an opportunity to um, bring forward the message about trying to provide different uh, language support, if you think that might be a topic that would be applicable? Um, yeah, absolutely. That is a very good point. Um, that is something that we could try to, in, in, to integrate into all of our work groups and see how we could work to do that. Um, that could be one of our, our projects for certain and one of our strategies. I know one of our kind of big umbrella goals is to you know, work on different resources and whatnot for the various work groups to be able to promote diversity and inclusion. And so, yes, that would be a really good idea. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you again. Do we have any other uh, questions, comments, announcements like this? Eric, I was just wondering if the JEDI workgroup has a, um, a web page either part of the Water Quality Monitoring Council or something else. Yeah, there is. Um, yeah. Let me pull it up. I'll put it in the chat. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you.